This is the biblical way of confronting a sinning brother or sister in Christ. You go to him alone. You keep it private. Not public. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any sin, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. You go to that person privately with a spirit of gentleness and humility, considering yourself, Paul says. Hey, I'm just as much of a sinner as that person who sinned against me. I'm just as capable of committing the same sin against another person. I'm no better. How would I want someone to confront me about my sin? Well, I would want someone to be gentle and compassionate when confronting me. Jesus said, do to others as you would have them do to you. And the goal of the process is restoration. Restoration. Paul said, restore such a one with a spirit of gentleness. The goal of this process is restoration. It's not to tell the person off. It's not to unload on them. Or to tell them how terrible of a person you think they are. The goal is not to win the argument or to prove that you're right and they're wrong or to make them feel terrible or to make them cry. The goal is restoration. I want to see my relationship with that brother or sister in Christ restored. I want to see their relationship restored with the body of Christ. And most of all, I want to see their relationship with Jesus Christ restored. That's my goal. If, if that's not my goal, well, then I'm in sin. Now, look at the end of verse 15. If he hears you, well, then you've gained your brother. Your relationship with that brother is restored. Praise the Lord. That was the goal. But if he will not hear you, then what do you do? Well, if he will not hear you, then you start a blog. That's what you do, right? You go on Wix, you slap up a website, you start laying out all of your complaints about this. You invite others to share their grievances in the comments section, right? That's what the world does. That's how the world handles it. The world likes to expose people and their failures. But that should not be so among followers of Jesus Christ. That should not be so among followers of Jesus Christ. We should never handle conflict the way that the world does. And don't forget that Jesus Christ died on the cross for that person that sinned against you. Don't forget that that person is part of the bride of Christ. That's his bride you're talking about. That's his bride you're blogging about. You don't want to expose the failures of the bride of Christ that he purchased with his own blood. And also don't forget that one day you're going to stand face to face with Jesus Christ. And you're going to have to answer for exposing the failures of his bride. That's a conversation I never want to have. Not just with Jesus, but with any man. And so that's not what Christians should do. Look at verse 16. If they won't hear you, take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So this is step number two. Step number two, if they don't hear you when you go to them one on one alone, privately, you take one or two more believers with you and you confront that brother or sister a second time about their sin And this fulfills the principle in Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So in in step two, you and one or two fellow believers sit down with that sinning brother or sister and with humility, you confront them again a second time about their sin. And, and, And remember, this is in a local church congregation. These are people who know each other, that love each other, that fellowship together. This is a This is a family meeting. And your your goal is restoration here, to restore relationships. And I would add to this, whenever you do this, you want to reprove the sinning person with Scripture. Not your words or thoughts about their actions, 
but share what the Bible says about their actions. On, on, a, on a couple of occasions, I've actually uh, printed out a list of verses addressing their sin and gone through the verses together with them and then given them the list of verses to take with them so they can meditate on them on their own time. It's important that you confront them with the word of God and not your words because your words will return void. God's word never returns void. Now, if that brother or sister in Christ still refuses to repent of their sin and seek forgiveness and restoration in the relationships, then the third step is you tell it to the church. Verse 17. If he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. So this is the third step. Tell it to the church. With a larger church, that would mean you go to the leadership of the church, to the pastors and the elders, and make them aware of the situation. Then the pastor and or the elders step in, and they meet with that person. And if the person still refuses to acknowledge their sin and seek reconciliation, well, then Jesus says in verse 17, let him be to you as a heathen and a tax collector. Now, heathen and tax collector were common titles in that day for people who are consciously rebelling against God. People who are consciously rebelling against God.